So gonna put that on once again with the track and then and then we'll take the next bit. <laughs> get to that bit the bass player never really plays the same thing twice there um so that means we don't need to learn it note for note we just got to learn the essence of it and the groove um and then we kind of make it our own so it's like um it's slightly different to what the what he's doing before on a minor I'm just gonna put it on again actually <laughs> Okay, and then it just changes to doing um, A minor G, A minor G, one chord per bar. Um, but the groove still stays the same. So just go back a little bit. <laughs> So it's very much this ba dim bim bim ba bum bum bim 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 ba bum bum ba dim bim bim ba bum bum bim 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 ba dum bum ba dim bim bim So we just if we just play on the the root here and the fifth below it we're going to go a g good on go and then g again dun 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 And then we've got to make it just a bit of add a little bit more sort of flavour to it. So we could start by just taking not really drastically changing the rhythm, but just changing a few of those notes. So instead of we could do um yeah, just the A C A dun dun dun. And then same thing on the G with the, the root and the third. Same thing um, with the fifth. A, D, E, you know, that high E. Do, do, do. And 
then if you you know if you're quick enough you can do a variation like um i think i heard one of those it's something like that so instead of do 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 So if we if we mix those around and we play sometimes do 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 and sometimes do 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 or sometimes just the root or we we can also change what we're playing on that fifth instead of let's go you know play the so we play that fifth below and the fifth above. Do that with me. And let's take it down to the G. Changing those around. You know, I can do some of those variations, and I'm like, mm. yeah, they don't all work. So then you think, okay. We how can I change it so it does work? So jam along a little bit with that. First. And even, you know, I, I prefer, if I'm going to be playing this, this D quite a lot, um, I prefer the tone on my bass, you know, it's slightly more resonant here. So if I'm not going to be using any of these lower notes in the bass line, then I might be saying, okay, let's, let's center it around here. You know, and I could talk. Um, because then we've then got access to these two notes you know we've got the the um the octave of those two root notes
yeah and that's where i would kind of find find the baseline sort of you know opening up a bit um you might even prefer to play that with your with your thumb as well if you've if you've been getting into that that style Gives a slightly different tone. Cool. Cool. I'll put it on a bit more. Just have another little jam with that. Because that's where sometimes when you're just playing along with it, you get into a sort of natural thing and then you start experimenting and, and little bits come out and you you know you might try and put in a little um melodic line you know let's think um yeah you could do something like leading up from the a minor and and landing on one of those chord tones something like that you know little line here we go might not be ready for this speed yet and that's fine but if you're trying to play it along with it and you know those all of those notes need to be in fitting quite um you know even if you're just doing you know needs to be fitting in in as as close as possible to the um you know how the semi quavers would would divide so that track um is called it's by san fan sorry sam fan thomas um really be best if i to, what, what i do when i when i upload the recording tonight i'll put a, a um a link to the track how you doing tim have you got something for us what? I had a Cameroonian guitar teacher in in the eighties. This is a riff he wrote for one of my tunes. If I can play it. Oh. For, for what it's worth, I can't play it very well at the moment, and on the guitar either. But um. Oh, nice. What's what's that one called? It was from my song called "Go Out, Find Out." Go out, find out. Cool. 
I'll see if I can play it a bit back. So I fluffed the notes at the end, sorry. I got the groove a bit better that time. Oh, yeah, I guess just if you can find a Mikasa back, um, backing track beat, you know, sometimes it just takes, it just smooths everything out. When you yeah, from what you were saying earlier about the, the, the Congolese tend to have the clave on the on the snare a lot, whereas the Cameroonians, the other other instruments will be doing the clave, like the hi hat or the um, cowbell or something. Stuff like that. Yeah, which means there's a lot more space on the snare, and uh, I guess space for that groove and space for that funk. How are you doing, Helmet? Were you going to show us something there? I saw your. Uh... Your microphone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. But I'm, I'm, uh, I think since uh, my course or some other styles from Cameroon are a little bit easy to, easier to consume for Western ears. So it's a little bit more like pop music or international. Also, there are some Cameroon musicians that make an international career. And I think. Yeah. It's like when you listen to. Like, um, there are a few, obviously, you know, Salif Keita from Mali, he's had a pretty long career and you can listen to albums he's done in the eighties and you can hear, oh, that's an album from the eighties because it's got those eighties pop production sounds and, and things in it. Yeah, you know, When you listen to Congolese music from the seventies or the eighties, you might tell the, the difference in decade if you know particularly the, the Congolese sound at that time, but it's like there's not a lot of external production influences, like um, you know, like in the, the Cameroon stuff that would have been recorded in Paris would have had a you know a slight sort of feel, and you know there would have been probably producers who were you know French producers taking the removing the groove. <laughs> from it and Frenchifying it, um, which you don't really get with a lot of Congolese stuff because there's just there's no way to um, you you know add in an AT sounding snare or a bit of chorus or in you know, it just doesn't. Really People tried the one the Congolese in Paris, but but um, can I just say you mentioned Salif Keita? Mm. There's a guy called William the Four who sadly passed away in the late nineties, but he ended up playing Salif Keita. He was a, he was a Cameroonian bass player. He was the best bass players come from Cameroon. Even I, Noel admitted that in one session a while back. So. I wonder why that is. I wonder why they're quite renowned as bass players. You have to treat it like. I mean, this is something I was taught by Coco Kanindra, actually, a Congolese. You have to treat the bass like a conga. And I've heard that from other people as well, but Coco told me back back in the eighties when I first met him. He's a he's a conga player, isn't he? Yeah. So a lot of the fill fills are, are like conga fills, you know, and, and conga rhythms. Yeah, but the, 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 yeah, it's definitely very very percussive. And the way you anticipate, you anticipate the beat a bit as well, it's something that Bell. We touched on in bell session a bit yesterday as well. Yeah, pushing notes coming just before the beat. I guess that's, and yeah, those muted notes. You know, is very different to. It means the chord changes can get a bit ambiguous. <laughs> so they maybe sometimes occur slightly on the on beat before the beat, or slightly on the on the on the off beat after the beat. Yeah. Cool. Nice. I guess this is slightly different structure than usual by by learning um a song rather than a rather than a group um if there's if there's other you know stuff um like this that you guys want to suggest and, uh, how do you how do you pronounce that uh band super you know like with omar penne super jam sorry super jammer no anything by them like uh from the 70s is just out of this world amazing you know the stuff on on, on senegalese cassette yes yeah yeah, right. yeah 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 it's all online now but it's just out of this it's world it's so good YouTube. yeah i've got yeah. some tapes the, the the tapes they used to come over from dakar i remember in the early <laughs> 80s wow they, they 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 got a french record contract in the mid 80s and interesting and somebody yeah. tried to over produce them for the rock market and they got a bit messy but 
<laughs> but that that stuff is i mean i i would be happy to learn some some of that that's really remarkable stuff you know cool so um choose a tune choose one okay i will yeah um, email me okay great we'll that next week yeah cool thanks ed no worries you did amazing work well there ed getting getting out of that day and i've tried before to work that tune out and giving up you know so <laughs> good i'll go back and try and work out the guitar parts again now yeah i guess yeah first thing you just got to make sure you're in the you're in tune with it otherwise yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. because it's never gonna quite um yeah cool all right excellent